Kevin, people with MS experience faster aging of their nervous system with smoldering MS. Is there anything that we can do to help slow this down or even prevent it? Yes, uh, almost certainly, because we know, not from MS, but from the general population, that what's good for the heart is good for the brain, and there's this concept of brain health that's emerging. And, uh, I mean, the most potent thing is exercise, to be honest with you. We know that people who exercise age less. Incredible things that happen in the brain in people who exercise. Now, I buy into this high-intensity interval training. Um, there's good data from outside of MS, and there's a, been a small study in MS showing you that it's even better than you know, continuous aerobic yeah. Uh, exercise. A lot of the therapists say to me we shouldn't be promoting HIT because people with multiple sclerosis can't do HIT, particularly if they're disabled. I don't agree with that because I, I actually it. think HIT needs to be personalized. All it means is you've got to get your pulse rate for a short period of time above 90% of max predicted max. HIT for you and HIT for me and HIT for somebody else, they're all different, aren't they? The good thing about HIT is that you can only, you know, you can, most of the research has been done on the three sessions a week. Uh, and the sessions last 15 minutes. So actually, from a time perspective, HIT is very economical from a time perspective. Mm. So exercise is number one. Um, the second one is diet. Um, the evidence for diet is not that good, but we do know that people who eat very, you know, diets that are high in processed and ultra processed foods are much likely to get comorbidities, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, which are all associated with uh, premature brain aging. So diet's important, and then preventing those comorbidities, uh, because not everybody who gets those comorbidities have those dietary risk factors, so there are other factors that involve. Uh, recurrent infections, people who have multiple bladder infections or even periodontal disease, you know, gum disease, recurrent sinusitis, uh, also have poor brain health, so there are things that can be done to prevent infections. Mm -hmm. Certain medications we prescribe to people with MS, particularly the so-called anticholinergic drugs, mm -hmm. and there are lots of them. Um, I mean, what's a typical one that would be the, prescribed? The one that's prescribed the most is amitriptyline. Right, okay. And these drugs for bladder dysfunction. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, an old-fashioned one is called oxybutynin. Yep. Um, it penetrates into the CNS. And we now know in the general population that your anticholinergic burden is associated with premature brain aging. So we should try and reduce the anticholinergic burden. And then there are certain things that potentially are anti-aging. So um, if you're a woman, HRT, uh, particularly in postmenopausal women, has been associated with delayed brain aging. Whether, whether it makes a difference in MS, we don't know. But if I was a woman, I'd want to be on HRT unless it's a contraindication. There's this drug called metformin that's used in diabetes. Um, we are trying it in MS. One of the m modes of action of metformin is that it's potentially anti-aging. And you may have seen these biohackers in America, they all take metformin as anti-aging drugs. So we will hopefully get... I think get it's called a fasting mimetic, isn't it? It cools your... Uh, uh, not cools, it fools your body into thinking that it's yeah. fasting. I used to work in the field of type 2 diabetes, which yep. is where it came from. We think some of the diets may do that. So uh, intermittent fasting may mimic anti-aging diets and uh, ketogenic diets. I, it's very difficult to stick to a ketogenic diet, so I don't really promote ketogenic diet. But intermittent fasting is a good one. The other big thing is sleep. I mean, when you actually take a, when you look at people with multiple sclerosis, you know, 80% have a sleep disorder. And in a significant number of those, it's obstructive sleep apnea. And that's one of the reasons why is I'm- Is that an obesity related thing? Or not is necessarily, it, oh, okay. in MS, it's not necessarily obesity related. Right, okay. I've got a feeling it's got to do with brain stem, you know, right. the bottom of the brain being involved, which affects the muscles in the pharynx. But poor sleep hygiene, we know, is associated with a premature brain aging. Um, and then there's social determinants. Now, I bang on about these, but loneliness and social isolation is associated with premature brain aging. Mm. And we know from various surveys, MS Society, for example, did a survey about five or six years ago showing you three out of five MS patients are socially isolated or feel lonely. Yeah. And they actually be have a saw now in the country, you know, a loneliness saw. Yeah. There's a whole big movement. How do we sort out loneliness? And the general practitioners now in the UK have got the social prescribing budgets where they can refer or give people re prescriptions to go and do music lessons, gym, gardening lessons, art classes. There's another video I did for Lived Health on social prescribing. Yes. What is it? How to get it? You know, how does it work? I don't think it's the necessarily the activity. I think it's the fact mm. that it forces people to get together in groups and they mm. meet other people and it's the social interactions that are important. So people can actually be proactive about making sure their social networks remain active. 
you know, how do you, and you've got to make an effort to that. I'm going to see somebody today. Or, yeah. you know, that's, so, that these, so when you look at the list of things that can be done to counteract premature brain aging, there's lots that can be done. And I think people with multiple sclerosis should be doing that. I was talking about this to somebody else and I call it the holy trinity of MS, sleep, exercise and diet. And also that applies far greater than MS. It's good for us to get those right anyhow. It would be really great to hear if anyone's got any positive experience with lifestyle changes. Also how you've overcome the challenges because it's a big thing as we're discussing. So if you could let us know in the comments and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe.